Today, let us reflect together on the fascinating and edifying story of the Shulamite, the young woman mentioned in the sublime Song of Songs. This love poem, attributed to King Solomon, is one of the most enigmatic books in the Bible. It features two lovers, King Solomon and a young country girl, the Shulamite. Their voices rise up and converse to sing of their love. But who really was this Shulamite who inspired the king of wise men? The Bible gives us few details about her identity. However, by carefully examining the clues scattered throughout the text and cross-referencing what we know about the period, we can sketch the fascinating portrait of this biblical figure. In the first part of this sermon, we will study the meager biographical information available on the Shulami. Secondly, we will analyze her personality as it shines through her words and deeds. Finally, we will reflect on the symbolic and spiritual meaning of this love story. What does the Shulamite teach us about the relationship between God and His people, between Christ and the Church? Let us follow the thread of her life from obscurity to light to find food for thought. First, what the Bible tells us about the Shulamite. Some exegetes have hypothesized that the Shulamite in the Song of Songs is none other than the Queen of Sheba herself who came to visit King Solomon in Jerusalem. Indeed, Jewish tradition recounts the legendary visit of the Queen of Sheba, impressed by Solomon's wisdom, 1 Kings 10 verse 1 to 13, struck by the magnificence of his court. She asks him riddles and ends up converting to the God of Israel. Now the Shulamite is clearly a foreigner, probably black-skinned, brought to the king's court. Her wisdom-filled dialogue with Solomon is reminiscent of that of the Queen of Sheba. Some have therefore not hesitated to identify the two figures. According to this interpretation, the Song of Songs celebrates the passionate love story between King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, who became his favorite, even one of his many wives. Their physical love would symbolize the spiritual covenant between the God of Israel and foreign nations. Although appealing, this hypothesis remains speculative. There is nothing to solidly support it. In any case, the sublime text of the song features the love of a powerful king for a foreign woman, prefiguring the universality of divine salvation. First, what do we learn about the Shulamite's origin in the context of her meeting with Solomon? As I said, the information is sparse. We know that she lived in Shulam, hence her nickname. This is probably the town of Shunam, located on the Jezreel Plain in northern Israel. So the Shulamite was a young country girl. A recent interpretation sees the Shulamite as a black woman. Indeed, she says about herself at the beginning of the song, I am dark, but lovely, O daughters of Jerusalem, like the tents of Kedar like the curtains of Solomon. Song of Songs 1 verse 5. She compares her skin to the tents of Kedar, a region inhabited by nomadic black-skinned tribes. Some contemporary exegetes, especially African Americans, draw a parallel with the black woman mentioned in Numbers 12 verse 1. Then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman, whether she was a Midianite, Ethiopian, or Egyptian. He could marry whoever he wanted as long as she belonged to the house of Israel. This black woman was criticized by Miriam and Aaron, but defended by God. From this angle, the Shulamite, the black woman loved by King Solomon, becomes a positive and empowering figure for black people. Her love story with the mighty King of Israel celebrates the beauty and dignity of the black woman. Symbolically, the Shulamite would represent all pagan nations of diverse origins called to become God's people. The song would herald the universalism of salvation, open to all men. In the New Testament, Jesus himself shocks by speaking to a Samaritan woman, John 4. He shows that his love transcends racial barriers. Similarly, the book of Acts relates how an Ethiopian, Munich, entered the church through baptism. Acts 8, verse 26 to 40. The church is intended to be universal, bringing together all of humanity. Thus the Shulamite, the black woman loved by King Solomon, 
prefigures God's love for all peoples and His desire to unite them in Christ. Her story carries a message of hope and inclusion that still resonates today. In the text, this Shulamite was aware of her sun tan skin, but did not feel self-conscious about her appearance. She fully embraced being a daughter of the earth rather than a pale-skinned city girl. Jewish tradition has sometimes seen her as the daughter of a vineyard worker. In any case, she did not belong to circles of power. How did a simple village girl cross paths with the most powerful king of Israel and win his heart? The song does not specify. But we can imagine that the king regularly traveled through his kingdom and may have noticed her and invited her to Jerusalem. What is certain is that the Shulamite did not leave the king indifferent. From the very beginning of the poem, he praises her beauty in glowing terms. How fair and how pleasant you are, O love, with your delights. Song of Solomon 1 verse 5. The young girl had obviously delighted the monarch to the point that he wished to marry her. For the song is above all a love poem. The king has eyes only for his beloved, to whom he declares, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. For lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 10 to 11, New King James Version. This intense love is reciprocated, as evidenced by the Shulamite's tender words. That sums up the meager biographical information contained in the text. But how old was the Shulamite? Was she still a child or already a young woman? How did her wedding to the king unfold? We can only speculate. Let us be content to discover this heroine through her deeds and words. Number two. The Shulamite's personality revealed through her actions and words. In the absence of concrete information about her life, the song allows us to discern the Shulamite's unique personality and character. Several striking traits stand out from this sketch portrait. First of all, the Shulamite is a free and independent woman. She dares to openly express her feelings. So when her beloved's late coming to meet her, she does not hesitate to go out looking for him in the streets of the city at night in defiance of conventions. I arose to open for my beloved and my hands dripped with mirror, my fingers with liquid mirror on the handles of the lock. Song of Solomon chapter 5 verse 5. New King James Version. This episode shows her amorous impatience and daring. The Shulamite dares to flout taboos to satisfy her legitimate desires. She also shows great determination. When the city guards mistreat her, she does not give up and continues her quest. Nothing can dampen her resolve. She is also a strong-willed woman who knows what she wants. On several occasions, she firmly rejects the advances of men trying to seduce her. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him, I am lovesick. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 8. New King James Version. Despite social pressure, she remains faithful to her soulmate and does not give in to temptation. At the same time, the Shulamite possesses an emotional sensitivity. She experiences love with passion and emotion. Her feelings are intense. Her amorous outpourings impetuous. She does not hesitate to compare herself to an eager door, impatient to open itself to her beloved. My beloved put his hand by the latch of the door, and my heart yearned for him. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 4, New King James Version. Her thirst for the absolute can be read in every verse of the poem. A lover of love itself, she gives herself totally to her quest for happiness. Finally, one last notable trait is that the Shulamite maintains a strong connection to nature and the land from which she came. Her references to wine, pastures and flocks betray her rural origins. She demonstrates a fine rapport with the living world. My beloved is to me a cluster of henna blooms in the vineyards of NGD. Song of Solomon chapter 1 verse 14. New King James Version. Her love is rooted in the creation whose beauty and harmony she celebrates. This is the portrait that emerges from the song. 
a woman of intellect and heart of rare intensity of life. Third point, the symbolic dimension. The Shulamite as figure of the people of Israel. Beyond the amorous passion expressed in the song lies a powerful symbolic dimension, which constitutes its spiritual richness. Jewish tradition, and later Christian tradition, saw in this love story an allegory of the relationship between God and His people. The Shulamite would represent Israel. While King Solomon depicts God, their wedding celebrated at the end of the poem would symbolize the covenant between Yahweh and Israel. In fact, the Bible often compares God to a husband loving his wife. This is a powerful image to illustrate the mutual and exclusive attachment between the Creator and His creature. As the Shulamite goes out looking for her beloved, Israel is called to seek its God. As she remains faithful to Him against all odds, Israel must keep its covenant with Yahweh. Of course the Jewish people have not always been faithful, lapsing into idolatry and unfaithfulness, but divine love is stubborn and abundant. It always forgives. This explains the verses in the song where the beloved seems to distance himself and hide away. In reality, it is the people who have gone astray, but the Lord's love remains. For Christians, this allegory continues and is fulfilled in Christ, the mystical bridegroom of the church. Christ loves his church with a maddening love, despite her repeated faults. He gives himself totally to her, even under the supreme gift of the cross. And the church is called to respond to this love by tirelessly seeking the presence of the Lord. The song thus outlines the traits of a passionate spiritual covenant. This book often bewilders Christians with its highly sensual imagery and apparent lack of references to God. Yet a spiritual reading opens up treasure troves of meaning for our faith. First, this sublime love poem reminds us of the importance of the emotional and sentimental dimension in our relationship with Christ. Jesus is not only a teacher and guide, but also a loving bridegroom whom we are invited to cherish passionately. The love of Christ must set our hearts on fire. Then, through the Shulamite's quest for her beloved, the song illustrates the soul's ardent longing for its creator. Our souls thirst for the divine presence and find rest only in the contemplation of God. The text wonderfully expresses this thirst for the absolute that inhabits every man. Moreover, the exclusive and reciprocal love between the spouses prefigures the unfailing covenant between God and His people. Despite Israel's unfaithfulness, God's love remains eternally faithful. He always forgives and calls each of us to a personal relationship with Him. Finally, for Christians, the love between King Solomon and the Shulamite symbolizes that of Christ for His Church, His Bride. Christ passionately loved His Church to the point of giving His life for her. And she is called to respond to this absolute love Thus, while the Song of Songs may bewilder us with its amorous lyricism, it contains a spiritual treasure that nourishes our Christian life. Let us read it with a contemplative gaze. Our meditation on the Shulamite leads us to the threshold of the mystery of divine love. This obscure and endearing figure brings us back to the essential, the quest for the loving presence of the Lord that must animate our entire life. May we answer his pressing invitations. Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Let us pray that our love will not falter but grow greater day by day unto eternity. Amen.